Hey there. Welcome to Rise Up Namobia. Thank you for joining me for part two of the topic of matrices. Now on screen, we have the objectives, the lesson, and extra examples. Without further ado, let's dive into the objectives of this tutorial. So in this video, we are going to be looking at equal matrices in detail. Okay? Now that we are done with the objectives, let's take a look at the lesson. So get your pens and notebooks ready. Equal matrices. So how do we know when two matrices are equal? Now here we have two matrices which are A and B are equal if and only if. The matrices are of the same order, okay? The order that we spoke about in part one. And then another property is, if the corresponding elements are equal, okay? So what do we mean by this? Let's take a look at an example. So we have matrix A over here and we have another matrix B. Let's see if they fulfill the properties of being equal. So property number one is that the matrices should be of the same order. Now to see if these two are equal, we need to check the order first. Are they of the same order? Let's check A first. So A is a 3 by 1. B is also a 3 by 1. Meaning both matrices are 3 by 1. So yes, they are of the same order. Now how about the corresponding elements? Are they equal? When we look at A, the first element is a 4. What about in B? Yes, it's also a 4. The 7, the 9, so all corresponding elements here are equal. Meaning, this is two equal matrices. Okay? Let's take a look at another example. Is matrix D and E equal? Now these two matrices, when you take a look at them, let's check the properties that we need to fulfill, which are these two over here. Let's start with the order. Is the order of these two matrices the same? So I'll give you around about 10 seconds, or let me say 5 which means you can pause the video now and then try it out, okay? Okay. So when we are to look at the order of these two matrices, the first matrix is a 1 by 2, okay? Now how about the second one? It's a 2 by 1. Okay, so these two matrices, are they equal or not? They are not equal. Why? Because they have different orders. These are 1 by 2 and these are 2 by 1. Okay, so it should either be, both of them should have either been 1 by 2 or if both of them were 2 by 1, then they would have been equal. Irregardless of the 3 and the 9 which is the same inside, the fact remains that the order, which is not the same, uh, is the one that disqualifies it not to be equal. Okay? Now here we have another question. Is the matrices C and D equal? So we take a look at C over here and D. Now remember the two properties that we need to fulfill. First we check, are they of the same order? So the first one is a 3 by 2, and the second one is also a 3 by 2, meaning they are both, met, like the both matrices are 3 by 2. So yes, the first property is fulfilled. Now how about the second property? When you look at these two elements, or let me say the elements in 
matrix C and the elements in matrix D are the corresponding elements equal. No, they are not equal. Okay? And in case you missed which ones are not equal, I will highlight them now for you. So the 9 and the 8 over here are not equal. While the rest of the corresponding elements are equal, the fact that these two elements are not equal disqualifies these two matrices of being equal. So they are not equal. Okay? Now how about when you are given two matrices and you are asked to find variables. For example, this one says, given that the matrices below are equal, find the values of x, y, and z. So let's start with x. Where in which matrix do we see an x? Or where do we see an x? So we see an x over here. Okay? Which is 3x. Now, what is the corresponding element of that 3x? The corresponding element is 6. Now, that simply means that 3x is equal to 6. Okay? Now, here 3x equals to 6 is a simple linear equation. We know already that if you want to get x alone, because it's 3x, it's like saying 3 multiplied by x. So, for us to cancel out multiplication, we divide, okay? So we divide both sides by 3. Why do we divide it by 3? Because we want to cancel out this 3 so we can have x alone. So that will give us x on the left hand side. And then 6 divided by 3 will give us 2. And that's your final answer for x. Okay? So let's quickly clean up here. Now how about for y? Take a look at your two matrices again. Where do you see y? We see y here. Now, what is the corresponding element of that element where there is the y? That will be 2. Meaning, 4 plus y is equal to the corresponding element, which is 2. Again, another easy linear equation, isn't it? So, here to get your answer, you could always take the 4 to the other side, which will become 2 minus 4. Or you can basically subtract 4 on both sides, which will cancel out on the left hand side and then you will be left with a y. While on the right hand side, 2 minus 4 will give you negative 2. And that's your final answer for y. Okay? How about for z? Again, check on your matrices. Where do you see z? Z is over here, isn't it? So what is the corresponding element of Z? That will be 7. So Z is equal to 7. And that's your final answer for Z. Okay? And just like that, you've answered the questions for, or the values. you found the values x, y, and z. Okay? Let's take a look at another example. So here you have equal matrices. Find the angle theta where that angle is between 0 degrees to 180 degrees. Okay. Now, here is where you see that with mathematics, especially if you're doing uh, the NSC uh, syllabus, this is where you see that they normally mix topics, okay? So, for example, for you to be able to answer this type of questions, you need background knowledge from uh, trigonometry, okay? You need to have the knowledge from trigonometry ratios. So, if you don't have any background knowledge of trigonometry, feel free to email us using uh, the code 332, okay? So, just email us and tell, write in your email that you need the video for the code 332. Okay? So, how do we do this? Now, you are asked to find the angle theta. Now, where do you see theta in your two matrices that are equal here? 
we see it over here, sin theta. Okay? Now, what is the corresponding element to that sin theta? That will be 0 0.83. So, sin theta will be equals to 0 0.83. From here, what do you do? You take out your calculator. Now, if your calculator looks like mine over here, you press shift. And then, since we have sin theta, you press the sin. Okay? So, you will get the inverse of sin. Okay? Then you press 0 0.83 in your calculator. What answer do you get? You should get something like this. Okay? So, we round it off to two decimal point, And then, we bring out our cast diagram. Now, after you bring out your cast diagram, you look at, since it's sin theta equals to 0 0.83, it means we are looking for where sin is positive. Okay? This is why I was saying you need some background knowledge from trigonometry. So, in which quadrant is sin positive? Let's start in the first quadrant. Here. We have an A. So, we know that all ratios are positive including sin. So, yes, we are going to be using this quadrant, okay? Which is from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. We are going to be using this quadrant. Let's take a look at the second quadrant, which is from 90 degrees to 180. Are we going to be using this quadrant? There is a S, which stands for sin, meaning in this quadrant, the sin is also positive. So, yes, we are also going to be using this quadrant. How about the third quadrant, which is here, from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. Are we going to be using this quadrant? No. Why? Because in this quadrant, the sin is negative. Okay? How about in the fourth quadrant? Are we going to be using it? No. We are also not going to be using the fourth quadrant because only cos is positive in that quadrant. The rest of the ratios are what? Negative. So we cancel out these two, and then we focus only on the two quadrants which are above. Okay? And if, yeah, and if you even look into the question itself, it says find the angle theta where that angle is between 0 degrees and 180. So if you take a look, we're only going to be using these two quadrants which are between 0 and 180 degrees. Okay? But don't forget, if you don't understand any of these, do email us using the code 332. Okay? So, what do you do next? Now, to find the angle in the first quadrant, we always say 0 degrees plus our reference angle, which is this angle over here. So, 0 degrees plus our reference angle will give us what? It will still just be the same. So it's 56.10 degrees. Okay? That is for the first quadrant. Now in the second quadrant over here, what do we do? When we are dealing with questions in the second quadrant, what we do is, we say 180 minus the reference angle, which is 56.10. Okay? So, what, what is 180 minus 56.10? That will give us 123.9 degrees. And just like that, you have found the two angles that are between 0 degrees to 180 degrees for this uh, theater. Okay? So, you will be getting two answers which is 56.1 degrees, and the other one is like uh, 123.9 degrees. Okay? How about another example? Now, in this example, I see we have cos. The previous one was sin. Okay? Because we are again asked to find the theta angle. Now, again, you look, where is the theta? It's here. What is the corresponding 
element to that theta that will be negative 0 0.255 meaning those two are equal so what do you do from here you take out your calculator you press the shift now this time because you have cos you press cos now after you you get the inverse of the cos don't put in negative 0 0.255 no just punch in 0 0.255 okay leave the negative for now what answer do you get you should get something like this now after rounding it off should be looking like this which is 75.23 degrees okay now after you get your reference angle which is 75.23 degrees you bring out your cast diagram now this cast diagram we are going to be looking for where cos is negative now this is where the negative sign comes in hand we are going to be looking for the quadrant where cos is negative okay so if we take a look here let's start here where they see in this quadrant is cos um negative or positive cos is positive so we are not going to use this quadrant we are going to cancel it how about in this quadrant where there is a a is cos negative or positive it is positive so we are also not going to use this quadrant because we are looking for a quadrant where cos is negative what about in this quadrant between 90 degrees and 180 cos is negative both in these two quadrants cos is negative so we are going to be using these two quadrants that are left okay how do we do it again we know already that in this second quadrant we say 180 degrees minus the reference angle okay which will give us 104.80 degrees how about in this quadrant what do we do we say 180 degrees plus our reference angle which is the 75.23 so 180 degrees plus 75.23 degrees gives you what 255.2 degrees okay so these two are your final answers now do you see the difference between the previous example and this example the previous example our reference angle was one of the answers but in this example none of our answers are the reference angle okay so the reference angle is not always part of the answer so now that we are done with the lesson let's take a look at some extra examples which will include equal matrices okay so feel free to pause the video now thank you for joining us Please do support our other social media platforms, which is on Facebook, YouTube, and our newly page on Instagram. Okay?